It's Sunday, January 8th, uh, about 1.30. It's about 37 degrees. We are just getting into the maple season, so that begins an agricultural harvest. And I want to throw a shout out, as I always do, to my friend Nicholas Robert Grossman. And I don't know, one of these days he's just going to show up and join us on an adventure. And here he is. Hello, my Hello. brother. We're so, <laughs> so, so uh, this yes. is really exciting mm -hmm. for us here at CSIS because you're going to... What is it you're bringing to the table? Well, today? you know, after our uh, listening to your conversation last night, like I was just basically speechless because this was all knowledge that I don't never heard, and I was soaking it up. I was very interested. And I'm thinking we're thinking what a good chance to get biology and the metaphysics. Like if these creatures are in, so interdimensional, then they should react to par paranormal gear. And that's the thing with your biology knowledge and my supernatural knowledge. It's like a, a project that we're probably going to start and uh, see if we could get some some evidence of some squatches or some puckwudgies or whatever's right. Here. And that's why we're here. So uh, we did a little research on where, of course, at our one of our favorite places, Mohawk Mountain, which is an absolute five on the squatch meter. And we're back at the only spruce bog, the only peat bog in Connecticut. And it's gnarly and it's awesome. And I'm so honored to have you here and your camera person. Camera person, do you want to remain unidentified or do you want to be? Come on up. Come on up. We have Amy with us. Amy, what are your skills that you're bringing to the table? So I'm a medium. I'm also a psychic. My medium part is I can sense when there's spirits or the, the puck wedgies and I can sense them around. I can also t tell you the number of puck wedgies that are around, the number of spirits, describe the spirits that are around. So, okay. and I asked Amy um, at the parking lot here, and you, gotta, you guys gotta get out, this is a great day. I asked her to do something really unusual, and she of course gave me that look that I get from everybody. She's like, what's wrong with you? Are you completely insane? And hey, yes, I am, so I'll be the crazy person. But, Amy, I'm gonna, and I asked her, she agreed that she's gonna talk to some of the glacial erratics. So we'll let her talk to them and see what Rocky has to say. Some of them are a little grumpy, you know. Some yeah. talk more yeah. than others. Yeah. yeah. They're, you're not unfamiliar with talking to rocks and trees and stuff, are you? Trees, yes. Rocks. rocks. She's and, a Wiccan. Yes. Oh. Yes. We are in good company here, so let's get in there. <laughs> <laughs> see what we can find. I'm excited. Follow the path, brother. And this is a blackjack oak tree, which is very cool. Yeah, so you can see, you're talking about blackjack oaks, you could see how everything's already stunted from right. know, being on the elevation, but also as you get into the, the bog. And here's, this is sphagnum here, and then this will fall and decay. Looks like we got... Basalt with mica inclusion. So this is going to be a very active rock. I'm impressed. Have you seen any? You don't think this when you're walking in the woods. That's the whole thing, and you're describing it. Do you, have you seen any guys, little porcupine-looking fellows, two or three feet tall in this area? You think we might get some evidence today? Amy, what do you think? You want to come and talk to the rock? Don't worry, I'm the, I asked her to do yeah. this to everybody else, okay? Wow. Okay. Definitely, this is where they live. There's about, I would say, there's, a, there's about five of them living under here. Yeah, about five. You want to do an EVP here? Sure. Yeah. Is it hard to set up? No. Culture script here and how it works is a spirit could go inside the computer system as a library of about 2,500 words so they'll pop up we'll try a little experiment experiment I'll put you right here right. so we're asking hide, for the, hide. we're asking for this for the stone Larry. throwers to talk with us today we are bringing gifts to stone thrower village so we come in peace and we ask maybe you could just communicate with us 25 years 56 years western let me just adjust the sensitivity monica 
lower. Think. Method. Arrest. Could you tell us if somebody lives down here? Long. Kelly. Let me get one more piece. 99 years. So the way we, that works is we bring gifts today to Puck Village. Cash. Okay, now we can get a clear reading. Can you just adjust the sensitivity? Yeah. You want to try communicating with them? Sure. sure. That's a simple question. How long have you have you guys lived here? Under these racks? Certain places we're gonna get stuff, certain they places we're quiet. not yeah, we're not gonna get stuff. Are bringing gifts today for and you. And soon as I said there's something piece. about there, it stopped. Could you please make this meter go off? You just have to go near it or touch it. This picks up the e the the stuff too, and it was spitting out so many words here, but there it wasn't. And then I just moved this. Can I put it inside there? Sure. Yep. But they're like running around crazy. They know how to avoid it, don't they? Yep. Can I move it further up? Sure, go ahead. I'll be very gentle with that. No problem. This is great, by the way. You guys. Yeah. Now, now, what is your thing? Will you call your thing again? Throw a shout out to promote yourself. Ghost yeah. Storm Investigations Paranormal Team in Connecticut that uh, produces Paracon with the Shaman and the Showman. And we're here uh, trying to get in contact. But like any paranormal, you just have to be patient and see what happens. So if you could just... That's what we're doing. Just know that we're coming in peace and talk with us. 59 years. Not. They know how to... Avoid Hard. It. They do. Thank you. We appreciate that. I would say there's about 20 of them living under here. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. About 20 of them living under here. The stone throwers, the Mohawks, we call them. This crystal definitely, hold on one second, it's taking a little, they're answering me, but it takes a little bit for them to. So this one, wow, these ones are very like hardworking. This crystal still protects them from whatever, but the only thing about this crystal that's unique about this one is that it protects it from rain, the storm. If there were like, you know, a hurricane coming through, it won't knock it over. No, no you're not knocking no, this guy over. No he's water. Been, he's been here a while. Yeah, so. How do you, so, can you find out, like, when I look at this and you say live under, okay? Biologically, I'm wondering how would you, oh. Oh, oh, yep. oh, 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 you see that? So you could easily pull yeah, this aside. Exactly. And wow, you really could. Yep. You could easily, yep. Yep, pull it. And that's warm. That's, I mean, it's not as cold as, as the rest, like the atmosphere. We'll put that back. I don't want to bother any hibernating insects. I see. Yeah. About 25 of them. No, you said hard working. Like, they're constantly, like, it took them. You know how back there it's like, you know, the rock. This is what they're telling me about this. Right, this is and not this is like, what, you would not think from it, under It's here. not like taking, like, back there there's a boulder. This took not only rocks, but there's a whole bunch of, there's dirt, sticks, leaves. Like a beaver dam. Like a beaver dam, exactly. Like as if they took like, you know, it's like kind of like building a brick house. You need right. the cement and you need the bricks. Right. You need a good foundation. You yes, need, exactly. You, you need framing and see what I was, get on here. Does anyone that was here? a spiritual experience. They wanted you, but, okay. they wanted us to understand about this rock. Most likely, it shouldn't, that wouldn't have been a coincidence.
Now, what is this tool here? And this is a spirit box. I want to go slower than that. We have gifts for, for Puck Village, but I'm going to leave a quarter here for you. Maybe you want to talk a little bit. Could any Puck Watchies come through? Don't tell us we come in peace. What does this device do? Well, this scans through white noise on the radio. And, you know, so a you'll lot pick of times, up radio waves, and that's yeah. what we're hearing. Like and they come out, they come through, they use it to come through. There's a tower, a radio broadcasting tower at the summit of this mountain. Who's here? Please. You could use these devices to communicate with us. We'll get it. This is the outer edges of the bog. Yeah. And so now you're studying. This is a described bog. So what happens is um, this is a pond, and, and the pond doesn't have a lot of water flow. Healthy ponds will have, have a stream going in and a stream going out or spring fed. A bog is just a still body of water pond, and eventually this sphagnum, this is growing, living sphagnum, okay? And here it is, too, a couple different varieties. And that, as that dies, it'll build up like a compost layer. And... That sounded like a dog man, didn't it? Again. Oh. Is that people? Twice. Um, so it composts, it grows, it composts, it's eating, it'll cling to this, it's starting to eat vegetation. All of this will die. Eventually the acidity of the peat will kill off all the fish. There's no light going through. The water becomes highly tannic, tannic acid. And then the, 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 the whole thing will float on top of a body of water. It can be 30, 40 feet deep. Some of them are, are not as deep, and if you if you walk on a bog and you fall through, that could be the end of you. Yeah. You're not going to be able to it's like falling push through the your, ice almost. Push yourself back up. And a lot of these bogs, as you get up further north into Maine and Canada, um, they'll have these walkways, and it's really not suggested you you walk on. Go ahead, stop scaring our pucks away. I mean, so we had storms come through. This could just be. This could easily be somebody walking by and a snap could just snap natural. I don't know. What do you think about them? We're hearing a lot of noises. Yeah. They kind of sound like a Sasquatch. They do. Yeah. There's not much over that way. Yeah. Well, let's get in there a little further. And we'll do a call to this place is beautiful. It's really nice having you guys here. It only goes a little ways. I want to learn this this whole thing that you're doing. So how long have you been hunting this one? So I, you know, after my first experience, I, I I knew what I experienced, and then I was like, I was always interested, and then I was like, it's real, and then a real interest started. Um, so how long has Cecil been doing this? How long do you think, camera person? Thesis has existed for two years, but I've definitely been doing this a lot longer, so I would hike and hear call taxi. Today, the they just, they have we no problem showing the themselves. The the so, the and this is gonna be awesome. Don't forget, I am here. So my powers, remember I told you? Stuff goes crazy when I'm around. Ghosts, everything. Somebody wanna give a howl? Sure.
Have you ever howled? Actually, I've never howled, and I, I don't know if I would be good at it. Oh, everybody's got to howl at Fusey. Fine, I'll you give it a try. Go, give it a... Like that? That's what a lot of them sound like. You did nice. just fine. Good. <laughs> you want to give one out there? Sure. What? I'm sure he's going to be here, isn't it? I'm going to throw one out. I mean, what do you think of what we're hearing? Amy, what do you think? That, this is what I think. I mean, there's two psychics here. or We're all very sensitive psychics. And now that when, when we're in a cluster in a group, the stuff goes crazy. So if it's not people, they're responding, they're feeling, they, they could see, sense us a lot more than a regular. Is that what you're picking yes, up? Yes, that's what I think. Exactly. <laughs> The last episode we did on top of, there's another cliff over by Puck Wedgie Village on the other side of the mountain. And I let one howl. I did, um, I was exercising some of my diving techniques to, to clear your lungs so that you can really stay down longer. And I let one howl. And we laughed so hard. I'm going to try the same thing here. Did you hear that? Is that a train? Did you just hear that? That's not people. Pack of coyotes, perhaps? That sounds like coyotes. They're in the distance. But I heard something after you did that. I went, That's probably a car. That's a car. I said we do a call tap. Sure, yeah. Which one of you two wants to do the call tap? Sure. You? Break the log, basically, right? Smack it. Yeah. Smack it hard. Get your. This is what's great about squatching. You can really get your tension out. Yeah. I get the hollow at three. Ready? Yeah. That was a tap. Awesome. I don't know why I never did this before, man. Did it again. I did it once, but ready? Yeah. It's voicey. Okay, my my thought is. It's cold. Want to try some of your equipment here? Yeah. It's detecting electromagnetic field. And there's no reason that should be doing that because we're in a bog. Yeah, there's no wires. That's a phantom energy doing that. This is a state forest. It's one of the bigger ones in Connecticut. And once we got the camera on it, it stopped. Those Bigfoots are some mysterious creatures. They you are. Know? They They're are. They're smart. Would any of them, would any of the stone giants, the stone coats like to talk to us? You could use this device to talk. 
You could use this advice to talk. And if you touch that, as you know, it will go off. You did earlier. It did. Did you see that? Yeah, I did see it. Could you do that again first, please? We come. I did it for you. We come in peace. Could you show us just one more time? We know you're here, but could you just show the camera? All you gotta do is go next to the vice and make it light up. Did it? Dude, there's something here, man. So, I don't know understand. if it's a you're Sasquatch saying... or some type of elemental spirit or an indigenous spirit. Are you so, from an indigenous tribe? There's no reason this should light up. No, there's no None reason. I mean, this is Litchfield, this is way out there. Yeah. You know? Respond. Did say. I said respond. Could you talk to us through our device here? Are you picking anything up? Just when you said that, it zapped to red. Did it? Yeah. Do you like that we're here? We're bringing gifts to Puck Reggie Village. Does that make you happy? Yeah. You don't want this place to drain your batteries. Wow. But there is something here. I can honestly tell you. Think about it. There's no excuse for this to go off. Even the phone wouldn't make it go off. Really? Yeah, this is electromagnetic readings. Right, you would need electricity. The phantom energy. Absolutely. How? And it was going off. It was intelligent, too. It was going off. Absolutely. It was going off as we were asking it questions. So this is very interesting because right up here in Litchfield, you know, there shouldn't be, there's really no reason for this to go off because there's not much Wi-Fi or anything around. Even going next to the Wi-Fi won't even make it go off. So it has to be a very strong phantom energy making it go off. Unless this has some type of wires or something There's underneath nothing. there, I doubt it, you know? No, it's too yeah. wet. It would it would mess up the conduct. What were you gonna say, Amy? So in this area right over here, I don't know why I feel uneasy. Yes. Something about this area right here. That's and it's always in that direction that we get our responses from. Yeah, it's just like for the past like I would say, like, when you guys took out the devices and everything, I felt like I was, we were being watched. But by, f like, Most I likely. would say, like, quite a few, like, quite a few spirits just, lo like, looking at us, but with an uneasy feeling. Yes. So. Well, you can see, I mean, from the density, yeah. if you wouldn't have to go very far. Right. And uh, just hide behind a tree. Yeah. You know, one of the things we're hearing a lot is that um, the squatches are doing this. They're, like... Yeah. Behind trees, they're like rocking. Well, you ever see that Survivor Man episode when he was going for squatches? See that? He left apples at a tree, and the thing, you couldn't see, it wouldn't show its face, but you see its hands climbing up the tree. You saw that? She Wasn't saw that it. cool? We did see it, yeah. It's and, very cool. Yeah. And you gotta love Les yeah. Stroud, right? He's awesome, yeah. He's the real deal. Stroud? He you, is the real deal. Stroud, you can go squatching with us any day. Absolutely. All right, but you gotta I'm wear you gotta wear a fake Sukulos hair, a wig, all right? That's that's the only thing. He's conditions. not like a watered down dude. The other ones are watered down, like they get yeah. They get you they, know what I mean. They fake it. Todd, they fake it, yeah. Todd standing Man. out there, you got caught faking evidence and you had a Netflix show and it's ab you absolutely faked it and that kind of thing really sets us back, us, us researchers out here. We don't post blurry photographs, and we're trying to get... It's hard to get any evidence at all. And then you do something like that with CGI, it messes us all up. So, yeah, dude. But there is one cool you're, you're a negative. You're a negative zero, negative infinity on the Squatchometer standing. But there is one cool YouTube with that elder, a guy with a white beard. Yeah, yeah. Saunders. Is that real or... It's so... It looks I, so real. 
It just... I, I think it's awesome, yeah. It's awesome. The shaman comes out. Erwin Saunders, right? That's the guy you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. It's a new show. It's it like is. a new show. But you know what I think it is? It's He, he does the drawings, and he sells the drawings. Yeah. And I think the camera person does the CGI. Oh, gotcha. I'm but him. it still is entertaining. It's all now. If you're gonna if you're gonna do that, okay, standing, that's how you do it. Yes, comedy, comedy, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that's what that's that's my role. Yeah. Look at these marks here. Huh? Yeah, look at that. Do a lot more. You want to learn? I feel something about that. Tell me what you're feeling in here. Did anybody want? What is this white substance right there? What is that? Okay, whatever that is, it's great. Do you want it? They're home? Yeah. It's the same as that. They go through. It's, it's like they this. They go through this side, though. Where would you put the equipment? Hmm. I would say maybe. Maybe put it right here. Okay, babe. Can you hear that thing, please? There's no more. Okay, so we have our meters out. This is on. So we have our meters out. If you go near them, they will react just like before. Can I do a howl and see what happens? Sure, absolutely. Ooh! I think if they held back and that thing went, that'd be so awesome. Should I give it a whirl? here whatever's under there they're not really happy oh they're like they're like get away from our house okay something like that we don't want to okay them. sorry about that we put in peace we leave you were like your privacy for some, but for some odd reason it's this one where they're like get out of here leave us alone huh i that part i and we got I nothing. guess they're not very welcoming. Really. Well, whatever that white powder is, maybe we don't want to disturb yeah. it. I think we're getting some good I stuff here. You get the, all of us here. The two knowledges combined and the paranormal gear. But so far, we know this: the needles work well with these things. Yeah, so I'm, and you're I'm saying sure. that's just that's just like crazy that it couldn't do anything, right? Yeah, not really. Especially to our to our questions too. So, what would for all we know, there could be a little race, race of some type of creatures underneath the bog, communicating through it. You know, Selene said they live under, and see, the history is that they're subterranean. Um, some of the history is that they, they are protectors of these caverns and these caves underneath these glacial erratics, and that their role is to be stewards of the wildlife, the environment, but they also have a history of um, keeping the dark spirits, the, the, the subterranean spirits sort of at bay and monitoring and, and regulating their behavior. And that's why Native Americans would leave so many offerings for them. But what did the Wampas do to put them off? That's interesting that in the Wampanoag history, from what I've read, they were friends. Um, but then there was uh, some disputes with 
uh, resources and access to areas, hunting areas. And then that started sort of some bad relations. And it's real interesting as you go, the, the Puck sort of territory is from the Northeast over into the Great Lakes. And the further away you get from the East Coast to the lakes, it sort of seems that the Iroquois tribes maintained a better relationship with them than, than the tribes on our, in our area. Which is just really, and that just really speaks to human behavior. Yeah. It's the hominids. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have emotions just like you. And emotions can be cultural. They can be carried on by many people. Um, so that's probably what you're seeing. And I would yeah. think that lends more to their reality then it would speak to keep to the dark them. spirits below. But remember when I said the Native Americans, especially Hop, Hopwog or whatever, Wampanoag, Wampanoag used to co consider the swamp that's, as people as an underground. Yeah, they're they used very, to consider that as as um, an underworld, like a, like an doorway. Point. Yes. So that that's why the Pukwudgies are important. So you could see how you would, in a bog, especially start to be like, yeah, this is looking like little cave habitat areas. Yes. You want to move on to the tower? Absolutely. We'll go yeah. to the summit and then yep. to the Puck village? Sure. You guys are great. Yep. Loving it. Hey, get out of there. You got to love this place. What do you think? Yeah. Got people in there, but that's not it. Of the seven towers in Connecticut, we think the most that were they guard towers. Some of them were fire towers. This one was actually a residence. So you got to imagine back in the 1800s, probably this was deforested, and you could you could get a sense. It's not the summit of the mountain, but you could get a sense of how you would be able to look out and this this is not a fire tower um so much as it used to be the cunningham residence you want to go inside absolutely we're out squatching today what are you guys picking up today there's something here that's... yeah wow okay this is weird because I would say maybe like five years ago, I had a weird dream. I was in a castle. I was in a castle. I was up there on that mantle. The mantle broke and I went falling and I was literally falling like, I'm talking, there was no floor here. Woke up like this. So now that I'm looking at that, I'm like, this was in my dream. Seriously. This is the place. Yeah. Nice. Do the music interfere with your equipment? Yeah. We'll come back down. Yeah. We'll come back. We'll go on our investigation. This is the place, huh? This so you would have had stairs? Right? Yeah. This would have been probably a wooden floor. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Probably could. And then the stairs would have continued. And then you would have to go on the roof. Cunningham. Definitely there's energy. In here too. Well don't worry, don't forget this is like a fireplace. This is where the fire elements. So there could be like um definitely the It still feels warm in here, even though there's no fire, of course, so. Definitely. See? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You still feel like there's an actual fire. Yeah. Right? Definitely warmer. Yes. These stones are cold. Exactly. There's energy up there, too. Definitely. I feel like I'm being watched from up there. Really? Yeah, but there's nothing, but there's, it's like, there's an end to it. It's so dark up there. It 
It is warmer there. Though. It is warmer. That's weird. It shouldn't be that warm. No, no. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be freezing. Too. Residual energy. Because, like, because it's a fireplace, there's gonna be like, what, regardless of whether there's a real fire, there's still gonna be fi fire elements that you feel it. You know. So. Move on. We'll come back. Here we go. A pair of handcuffs in the woods, right by Cunningham Tower. Going in our weird things we find collection. We'll bring them to Paracon. Nice. We got to find out what that connection is. We nope. we are always fun. This is one of the craziest finds yet. I love this one. We're going to have fun with this later. I want to get squatchier. You know what I mean? He wants to get squatchier. Yeah. I got a place It is for cool, though. That's a bear, isn't it? It's not a bear. Oh boy, I don't know what the hell it is. There's another one over there. No, I don't, I'm thinking right for it. It looks like it has like claws. Could be wrong though. That's not a horse. And so, I'm trying to discern a path of travel. Walking on the road here. So, my guess is they're coming either up or down, and something happened right here. That's pretty freaking deep. And these are too close. To, so, this, Robert, you could be right about there. Yep. And this could be a bear. Picking up steam. Look at how deep that is. I mean, look at how deep yeah. that is. And so maybe this would be another because it's going to be quadruped. So there's from, also a grill there, so somebody could have been grilling, been cooking, and it could have been attracted to the. And then something. The smell of the food. Something happened right here. A whole lot of commotion happened right here. Um, they came up. They came up here. Sniffing around the grill, and something crazy happened right here, here, and here. And then I'm thinking, came down, traveling through here. Uh, so my guess is then it stayed on the road because yeah. the track stopped. It definitely pulled in here. If it's a bear, it's one big honking mama with possibly. Um, a juvenile, mm -hmm. maybe a couple, There's maybe smaller three. smaller prints over there, so maybe that's the juvenile. Yep. Maybe when it was a little warmer the last couple of days and it was sloshy and the activity might have just been slipping, you know? Yeah. It's all just, whoa, because it happens, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll take it right up top and go to Puck Village. Just want to spend a couple of minutes with your button. Oh, man. I'm seeing like in, like when the English came the here, colonists. the colonists. Yes. Yes. Like yes. Yeah. They're definitely they're pre they're around here definitely. Like in this area, further up that way, but mostly like right around here. Even the like before the street right over here was there. The homes kept going going further and further. It feels like a like a little town right here. So. Well, I want to explain foundations. The foundation. It would. It would. And there's springs here. The springs are going to be very good drinking water, not contaminated with the Ardia. Yep. The you Ardia just drink it right from there, right? Yeah. Right. You had a beaver fever. You ever got beaver fever? No, I never got I it. I have. What is that? Uh, that's where you drink water that is downstream of a beaver dam yeah. or muskrats or something. And um, that water is going to have bacteria that are going to make you dehydrate and you're going to have diarrhea. Yeah. It could be a life-threatening situation. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, a spring here. So we're talking about colonies. Yeah. 
this is coming right out of the mountain. And this oh. water is wonderful to drink. Except for the bugs on it. So there's what wow. I call the King Chamber. The village. And so you see them all yep. dotted. All on this perfect, imagine the road's not here, right? Yeah. All on this perfect slope. There's no, not any crazy wind here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I'm glad> <laughs> Camera person's with me. I was telling him how when we do, we were Meriden and here, we're about five miles in, winded like this. And all of a sudden this happened to us twice these Two girls in their 20s, the first ones were brunettes, both of them, second ones were blonde, no backpack, no water, no hiking sticks, and they just zoom right past us, yakking away. Yeah. Uh, it's like, what? How are you? It's good to be young, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we have offerings today, and there's one for each member of this investigative party. We have paper cups and some stuff. We have dried cherries, coffee beans, copper, and a couple other things. And um, tell me about your experience with the pucks. Okay, so basically in Massachusetts, in <clears throat> Bridgewater, Massachusetts, me and my former teammate about 10 or 11 years ago went to Freetown State Forest at a, a cliff called The Ledge. And, you know, I was teasing my teammate. I was trying to give him a hard time by saying Pukwudgies come out and do something to us. And I was trying to Provoke give them a hard time and I never thought that they would actually react to what they did. And one rock threw, got thrown and I, the bush shook, it was at night. And so I thought, oh, that's just an animal I scared. And then all of a sudden, all these rocks started getting thrown, probably about this big. None of them hit me, none of them hit him. And uh, we went back to the motel and I laid in my bed, he laid in his bed. And all of a sudden, I hear this noise. I wake up to this noise go, brrr, and there's a Pukwudgie Yehi blowing a tree root, a hollow tree root like a horn, and he smiled. He looked at me and smiled and disappeared. And I said, dude, you're not going to believe what just happened to me, man. And that's basically what it was. But, you know, I didn't intentionally mean to disrespect the Pukwudgie. It was more towards, you know, playing a prank on my friend. That was the whole thing. So that's why I think it... Colin thought it was a good idea to give a, a peace offering. That's what we're going to do. Um, so we're here in Mohawk Mountain, and, you know, I did a little research. And I'm going to try. We've tried to um, talk about the, the names that the Mohawk would use. Puck Wedgie is a Wampanoag tribe. They're very close to here. But the Puck Wedgie, we had to all practice this together, and I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's interesting, as I was telling you earlier at the house, um, that they're called um, by the Mohawk, they're called stone throwers. And uh, that's really interesting. Um, and then we talked about the stone giants. They called the stone giants stone coats, but the stone throwers, let's all try to do this, are the Yakanen Yakas. Yeah. So that's a long, complicated well, name. We're going to post this one for you. <laughs> and the stone coats, they're, they're equally. This is one of the most difficult languages I've ever seen, so kudos to the Mohawk. Um, but let's do this so we all have offerings. Can everybody make it up to the king chamber? Absolutely. Okay. Camera person? All right, let's do it. Good. Good. And they disappear. Sorry, I'm disturbing you. Everybody help each other up here. Can you make it, Danny? Oh. Be careful. Your foot's on a log. Okay, now I got it. Do you want to come up? What do you think of it? It's unbelievable. Look at how far back. Yes. Oh, yeah. The vein goes in. Yeah. We have some offerings to bring you. Everybody. Peace offering. 
We have really good stuff for you. We gave you some of our finest stuff. Don't touch yours, just touch it. Paper because it's biodegradable. We don't want to, we don't want to pollute the king's chamber here. And to the whole village, we offer you medicine, chamomile from Poland and pyramids. Berries, copper. Copper has very interesting antibacterial properties. It can be bent very easily, shaped into things. It's extremely useful. This is awesome. You could communicate with us, and uh, as you can see, if you go near it, it'll probably go off, since you are most likely cosmic beings or interdimensional beings. I offer you corn. It's microwave corn, but it's in a paper bag. Please accept this on behalf of all four of us here today. We're going to present you with an offering. To us. You all have something personal to say. I would like the, uh, an apology to the tribe here of stone throwers, uh, or what I know I'm known as to as Pukwudgie. Uh I didn't mean any harm intended, but I was making fun of my friend. I could see why you would take that very personal, because I was using you at your own expense. So uh, with these offerings, you know, please accept my apology uh, to your tribe. And uh, we would love to get evidence of you. I know we're connected. Um, there was a reason I saw the Pukwudgie standing next to me. There was a reason for that. And we're here and we want to give evidence. And we would love to prove that you exist. We'll accept my apology. I'm sorry. And again, you can make these go off by touching it. Sure, it's first nature. Yeah. And then like, yeah. they actually they accepted the apology. Is that me? Oh, that's me. He fell over. They accepted the apology. You did? And they're very yes. And they're also because that's of the nice. offerings that we're giving to them. They've been they've been very hungry for a long time. So the fact that we're bringing them. Well, nobody offered them. Yes, exactly. So they're anymore. very happy and like they. They accept his apology. That's good, Nick. They accept your apology. Thank you. Not a lot of people, have, like, I know because there's a lot of people out there who would have been like, oh, you know, they're, it's whatever. Like, you know, of course, like, you know, it's just a very male no, This, like, if you come out and say sorry for respect. They appreciate it. Yes, that. exactly. Right. They're homies, just like us. Yes, exactly. I'll be with them. And we take our trash. Nick's gonna have nice dreams where they, your wife said they accept your apology. All right. Could you guys give us a hello? It might not be easy for you guys, but can you give us a hello and make one of these uh, bad things go off? They said it doesn't have to be, like, the way that they'll say hello is if you feel, like, the feeling of acceptance, like, the best thing to do would be to leave the recorder for a couple hours in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I know they're in there. I Maybe can feel it. Stuff. It's not every time they'll make the meters go off, even if they're in there. Sacrifice and gifts. Could somebody speak with us today? We're friends. Okay. Away. It was weird that it said away. I don't know what the bet means. 
Can you say something else, please? Away and bet. Are you happy we're here? To be there for a I'm hearing a whistle. Yeah. I know with the road it's hard, but become as friends. Mm -hmm. Love to open dialogue and just say hello like you did last time. Hey Colin, do me a favor. Yes, sir. All right, sure, they do it. Warrior. Warrior. That's using me as a con conductor. Placate. What's placate? Means to make happy. Oh, great. Trying to what the offerings and the apology. That husband. It said husband. We. May spit out random words, but you can tell when it's being intelligent. Truth arrived. Scientist. Faith. That's our niece's name. We're not. We'd love to get a signal from you guys. So this is the same thing. Uh, EMF is picking up electromagnetic field, and that's what what's giving it the words. Which is weird because up here there should be nothing. There should be none of that. Watch. Watch. Yeah. Did it say squatch? Did it say squatch or what? Watch, but they sometimes they do their best they can, so they may have said squatch. What do you know about disaster? Sasquatch? Emulate, to imitate, to be like. Chief. Chief? Yep. See, that's what the Jersey Devil is. So yeah, spit out random words, but you could tell when it's intelligent, when it says stuff like chief and stuff that we're doing. Are we welcome here with our gifts? Nest. It's saying all words relating to what we're doing. That's it what is. it is. Unlike before, now it's saying all these words. Just lower the sensitivity so it doesn't. Are you protecting the uh, the creatures up here from the underworld? This is great. Can we speak with the chief, please, of the tribe? So you're not gonna get much radio frequency up here. Got it. And that's why it's so weird that that was spinning out so much words. So you know, to the squash the meter, this is, we're going right to a six, and we don't even have a six today. I just said yes. Come on. I said, can we speak to the stone doors? And I said, yes. Now try asking a question, put it to your ear. Can you let us know if we're welcome and we can continue our relationship with you? Did you hear that? Yeah. Was that a radio frequency? Or? I don't know. I'm not familiar. Oh, yes. But I did. Amy said you were hungry. Could you talk about that? Food.
Is that food? Yes. This is awesome. This is quartz. And this is base salt. They're two different rocks. That's crazy. It's not fractured from the same rock. So we used um, a device called the Pulcher Script, and it was spitting out, it, it's a device that will spit out words. And it was spitting out words similar to what we were doing here, like chief, food, I think maybe one time it said, and a whole bunch of other words. Psychic, aunt, faith. Warrior. She's, she's an aunt, and uh, faith is our niece that we talk about all the time um and warrior and all sorts of indigenous type of you know stereotypical words i guess not stereotypical but common you know stuff right right this is just and the structure i was saying is quartzite which has just made this perfect chamber and is not part of the basalt here and it just it's just crazy geology, that's all. I'm just not going to speculate on what I think about that. I, I know what I think about that, but that's crazy. So yeah, we're going to definitely do a project here with the paranormal gear and uh, the cryptids because, you know, so far it seems very successful. And, you know, I never understood why they don't use that on the shows. They don't experiment, experiment, experiment with that. But that's what our main, you know, experiment is with uh, the gang here, so. This is awesome. We'll see you out there. We're going to go yes. down and check out parts of this field here. Wait until we get video. Yeah, man.